Pop of the morning, everybody, and welcome to Popcorn Culture. As always, I am your one true host, Jazzy J, joined as usual by my brother and the one true co-host, Buzzy Benjamin B. How you doing today, Ben? Doing just just truly splendid. Thanks for thanks for having me this morning. I, I really appreciate you. I mean, I got the email invite. You know, it's kind of like one of those things, right? Yeah, a little bit of like a fangirl moment. To be honest, right. with you. it was kind of like I was like, wait, no, wait, for real? Like, and then, then like the imposter. <laughs> I'm on the show, right? The imposter syndrome sets in, and you're like, I don't even know. Do I? I I mean, it's like, is he sure? Like, I don't know. I mean, have you even seen any of my work? Like, I know kind of an awkward question not to put you on the spot. Or I'm pretty like familiar that. with it. Yeah, I've seen, seen many, yeah, of yeah. Your, many of your uh, published works. Yes. OK, yes, OK. Well, know. anyway, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I mean, truly just feels like a huge opportunity. Hi, mom. Um, you know, to come on to come on the show. So I'm, I'm super excited about it. it. Should be a lot of fun. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I'll have something that, that your listeners will will find to be, be be interesting today. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. So it may um, it, you might not be be uh, familiar if in case you're not as familiar with this show you know we, we um occasionally sometimes when we remember we will uh, kick things off with a corny joke a corn the corniest the kinds corniest of, joke. of jokes yeah, i yeah. know yeah. so you've got one i've got one for you right, are you hit ready me with it. hit me with it. all right so it's really it's it's more of like a uh well you'll just see it. I, not, I just gotta say it's so cool it's like i've heard so many other corny <laughs> jokes like listening to your like the episodes like now i can be like i'm here for one so okay lay it on me lay all it on right me. so a man walks into a bar and there's a bunch of meat hanging from the ceiling and he asks the bartender like hey what's the what's the deal with all the the meat up there and the bartender says well we just have a promotion here at the bar like if you can if you can jump up and touch one of the meats up there you get a free drink but if not you have to buy a drink for everybody here and the guy looks up looks back at the bartender says what do you think you want to you want to go for it and he says the stakes are too high <laughs> that's so good that's and what a good gimmick though know, right? like oh my gosh that's that, <laughs> how often do you have to replace the beat <laughs> that's a, I, know, right? I mean that seems very costly but the, in the meantime like the opportunity it feels like the type of thing that like people would like to go to this bar because it would have the, the the like the thing right attached yeah to it. like but i actually really like that because it does feel like in a real world where this bar exists i could imagine the community attached to it like people come into town they would like see it you know like on, yeah on like google reviews and people like you gotta go you gotta go sometimes you get a free drink uh and and even if you don't like it's it's like everybody's gonna be so excited to have you there if you try and and fail because they get a free drink because then they get a free drink so like they're they're like excited for your failure but it also is sort of like it comes with like such a positive right. exchange but hilariously you, i feel oh, like if you're the bar you'd need to have like a like a one dollar drink on the menu or something may, maybe you know, so like, right, like, right like we will we will serve everyone a drink but like don't worry it's only going to cost you like 50 cents a person or something. right yeah, yeah you like a four ounce pbr or something yeah, like yeah, that yeah. yeah just sort of like yeah, a, it's like, like a shot of beer yeah <laughs> yes yeah yeah it's like okay all right Right. Um, I will say, and I have no idea to this day because like before I was getting ready for my study abroad in Australia back in 2011, I remember like one of our professors was explaining to us this concept called a shout at like Australian bars. Okay. Um, and, and if we have any like Aussie viewers, I would love to know whether or not like this is something that you've actually uh, experienced in, in real life. But I feel like, I feel like this is like one of those things where it, it could have been the case where because Australia is, I mean, it, it's its own like unique culture from the United States, but like it's also f similar in a lot of other ways as well. So I don't, yeah. I don't know if like they were trying to give us like some kind of like, here's a cultural thing about Australia that you could experience while you're down there. But it is, yeah, the shout is basically like you would go to a bar and the, the concept would be that you buy around for everyone in the bar. Okay. And I do remember that like I was told this and I was like, okay, I need to be prepared. So I spent like a ton of time preparing it, like going like the months leading up to my trip to Australia, trying to save money and selling things and doing everything I could possibly come up with to have as much money for the trip as humanly possible. Because I was like, what happens if I end up needing to buy like 40 drinks? Right. You know, like I, I like <laughs> for myself, I won't buy 40 drinks the whole time I'm there. Right. You know, like, but, but like what happens if I walk into a bar and it's like, all right, that's a bar tab of like, you know, 400, $500 or something like right. that. Like, Oh, Oh no. Um, okay. Like, 
you know, I, I want to go, I want to make sure I do right by the, by the locals, you know, by the people who are here, but I'm also like terrified at the prospect oh my gosh. Of, that, of the yeah. expense. And then like we got there and like, at least from our experience, and it could have been the case we were just going to pure touristy bars, but it was not, it, it didn't come up anywhere. Like right. I, I didn't witness a shout. Well, th- that is interesting. Th- I, that is such a fun thing to be like, like really concerned about it. Yes. It feels like, it feels like like quicksand or something like when you're a kid like, oh yeah right, you, know, like right. you grow up and you're like quicksand just like it's gonna be a problem when i'm older right like i'm right. gonna need to know how to deal with it like don't move stand still you know whatever but it's like that's not really a thing out in the wild it's like you hear about it but it's like it's not really out there like it does exist it's not that it's non-existent but like it's not like um but yeah is is it really out there i <laughs> know uh, i know i i mean i now now i'm trying to remember if i've even told the story in the pop or if i just talked to the team about it here in the office so it's like stop me if i did but somewhere along the way somebody told me that like corn silos like where they like store yeah. dried corn yeah like if you fall in you can like sink down inside of it mm-hmm. and it can be incredibly you can dangerous. like displace the yeah, yeah like like it's it's and you can't I, I i think it's the case like you know it's it's one of those things where it's like could you swim in a pool full of jello like like would jello react to swimming motions the same way that like it like water does like like is that how being right. fully submerged because to the best of my understanding corn is one of these things where it's like it's lightweight enough that you that you like drop into it right um, because like there's enough it's like it's not like it, you can't push against it like water because there is air between the kernels right yeah and yeah. but then like the the edges of it are also smooth that it's not like gravel either where like if you were to land yeah, it's, it's not gonna like, like catch on itself exactly either. yeah, yeah. Like, like, there's not enough friction so it's like it can be really dangerous and i and i feel like somebody told me this once upon a time as well and it was one of those things where it was like i immediately like, like sometimes i will like just have the resting fear that i will find myself atop a corn silo and somebody may just push me in right you know and it's like it's like ben you've never seen a corn like oh not you've never seen a corn salad yeah. you never you never had to interact with one ever right and and even if you did chances are the person who's up there with you is also very aware of the attached dangers and doesn't have like you know isn't isn't out to get you yeah but, right but in my head i'm like i'm this close to accidentally finding myself atop a corn silo with, <laughs> yeah, a, with exactly. an enemy <laughs> i assume there's probably even like I, I would bet that the modern corn silo also also has like ladders on the inside oh, for in, such occasions. Such occasions, like, like yeah, it's like, like like there's there's safety protocols. Like they know involved. it could. Ha- I do yeah. think this is a thing. I think you can drown in corn Ooh, for sure. Don't say it is. <laughs> I, guess, I, don't, I don't like it. No, yeah, um, I know. This is not the kind of uh, corn culture we're trying to discuss here. No, on, no, on yeah, not, not, not what the original <laughs> intent was. Um, but so that's the other thing too. Yeah, so it's like where where is quicksand and why is it there? I know. I would assume it has to be like like on the in like jungles J- jungles and but i don't know jungles, if that's, is that jumanji that, the movie it like could be. infiltrating our it, brains i know i'm like this 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 is where it shows up in like you know uh in movies and stuff is in in jungles like the amazon rainforest i'm not sure why there were just, but then you have to ask you like why is there a pit of sand in the middle of the jungle and it's like well maybe quicksand is even the wrong word it's just like really loose dirt that has just the right amount of water in it so it feels as if you know yeah well so yeah. this is this is just a quick google search while we were talking so, okay because uh, i just wanted to know it's like so quick quicksand can be found all over the world but it's most common in the united states so dang it oh man uh, we're as close as possible <laughs> so, <laughs> suddenly the walk to my car seems a lot more dangerous i know it's like, like i'm pretty there was a sketchy pothole yeah <laughs> that, no, no, we need to keep an eye on that one give it a wide berth yeah um most common in the united states near rivers and estuaries it's especially prevalent in the marshy coast of florida and the I, carolina of course it's in florida I know. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, as well as the canyons of southern Utah, New Mexico and northern Arizona. So, OK, OK. So it's like one of those things where it's like, but but this is it's interesting because there have actually been occasions where I've been like wading into a river to go like kayaking or canoeing or something like that. And you do occasionally find yourself inside of like gloop. Yeah. For, for lack of a better word. Yeah. Where it's like you step in and it's like it's kind of mud but you're you're sort of like knee deep before you know it but also it's one of those things where it's like 
there is like a layer of clay. Yeah, it's know, like I, it's down. like it occurs to me that perhaps I have been in shallow quicksand before. But yeah, that's exactly it. It's right. Like, but but like now that now that you start to think about it, it's kind of like, have I survived quicksand? Exactly. Like, I, know, on, right? no, I mean, like a bunch of times, like a bunch <laughs> of times, you know, like ankle deep, shin deep quicksand. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> kind of smells no awful. Problem. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can see, though, where it would be like in those scenarios, I've also like been, you know, stepped in. Um, that consistency of stuff, and like you try and pull your foot out, and like you know, you lose your shoe. You do, yeah. I yeah. mean, it, it has like a like a suction to it, you know. Yeah. That you have to be highly like highly aware of, or or you know, I don't know. But yeah, it's it, it it's funny to me because you're right. Like it is one of those things, and then and then even in my head, I'm like, wait, okay. But so where is quicksand and why is it there? And it's like in my head, I'm almost like maybe everything we've ever been told about quicksand is is like largely not as like worrisome like even though it does exist it, it almost never exists in the capacity you've seen it right like yeah so like because what what yeah, every every time you see it it is you know a giant pool of 20 foot quicksand and it is trying to eat you yes and yes yeah <laughs> yeah like i mean it seems like like in, in there's certain, probably a snake in there too or oh yeah, yeah. It's like it's just like it's like yeah so it's like even if you get out of the quicksand the snake's gonna get you exactly like, you're doomed yeah. why, are we, why are we providing people with nightmare fuel right now i know yeah they're like guys guys come on guys <laughs> just trying to drive to work over here do you think like other, i think this was like specifically it seems like quicksand was a real danger in a lot of like movies for millennials like i wonder if gen z people have like even any fear of quicksand at all uh, they're like what do you guys they're like what do you about? what like, is quicksand i have to look this up now oh my god no <laughs> no <laughs> this, this is what you guys were told was out there <laughs> yeah, exactly this is what we grew up afraid of man it is it is indeed yeah. but, but 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 fortunately so far knock on wood we've we've either survived com- it. completely yeah <clears throat> conquered even yeah. is the word i was conquered it yeah, right yeah. Just spat in its face <laughs> right, quicksand. right maybe maybe that's maybe that should be our our uh our new our new t-shirt campaign is is proud survivor of quicksand <laughs> <laughs> probably <laughs> i mean it's, yeah. it's everywhere ish yeah. um anyway so there you go but yeah corn corn silos corn silos just for whatever reason I, I mean it's like it's like sometimes i i like will literally just be like sitting there and i'll also be like what are you thinking about i'm like do you really want to know <laughs> Not corn silos. Why? It's quite, I'm, I'm thinking about corn silos I'm thinking again. About, again. 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 I just can't here. get it out of my head. It does. I mean, it seems like, if, you know, for something, especially because in my mind, and it probably isn't uh, like popping corn like we would use for popcorn, but something yeah. I love so dearly yeah. for it to turn on me like that and become dangerful. Yeah. I'm not a fan. No. I mean, I suppose, I mean, they must store the the unpopped popcorn somewhere. Well, certainly they do. Right. I mean, yeah. yeah. It has to be somewhere before it goes in those containers. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, or does it? Or <laughs> they just get it right out of the field, straight into the container. You know, I will tell you that at some point, I think this is even a thing that you can purchase, but they're like, they're like cube watermelons. And I think that they, mm. they actually, they're so like, they a, don't roll. So they don't roll. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's like a, like, I think they're very expensive. Sure. Because yeah, sure. The process is, is taking like an acrylic box th- so that the, the fruit as it grows is, is able to like oh, fill like in yeah, yeah. the box. Then you like crack the box open and you've got like a cube shaped <laughs> watermelon. Um, I feel like that this is another one of those things like where it was on like the news one night, you know, like the five o'clock, like fluff piece is like, yeah, could, could watermelons becoming cubes? And and it, I think it was like, yeah, it's like, so they don't, then they don't roll and they can be like packed more neatly and stuff like that. Right. But it's like, it, it seems like it's never really caught on as anything more than like a novelty. Yeah. But I'd like to have one someday. A square watermelon. A cube. It feels like it, under those growing conditions, it f- just feels like it would, it's not as healthy for the plant. It, it does which, feel like it's not as healthy for the plant, which seems like it would yield a less good, a less tasty. flavor. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Um, speaking of fruits. Yeah. I noticed on the show notes that you had something here oh. and I was, <laughs> I was blown away because as I was scrolling through what your notes were, I was like, wait a second. Okay. What is happening right now that this has happened to both of us? Oh, uh, I'll, I'll let you lead because it, you, you included the thing first. Okay. About the bananas? About the bananas. About the bananas. Okay, I'm curious what happened to you with bananas. Well, it's just, I mean, yeah. I, 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 there's a piece of me that feels like it's going to be the same story, but let me okay. know. Okay, okay. Yeah, maybe it is. I had, this were all my, uh, the other day I was like literally um, like typing the, I was like thought vomiting all of these notes onto 
uh, like just a, a note on my phone. Yeah. Because I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to forget it all. <laughs> and I was typing and it was like all so fresh in my brain. And you were like, what on earth are you writing over there? I've never heard you type this long, this fast without a break ever. <laughs> Dude, it was, I'm not going to lie to you. It was actually jarring. So me and Jay work close enough to each other that our computers, like, we're, we're, I mean, we're, we sit like four and a half feet from each other. We stand. Yeah four and a half feet from each other. Yeah. And you are, are, I would say you have like brevity in the way that you communicate via text or email. Like I, you are not someone who's like sending like, paper. I'm highly skilled at it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you send you, you are concise. You do not send paragraphs ever. If you, if you sent me four sentences in a text message, I would probably call you and be like, yo, what's up? That, like, I mean, like, that's an alarmingly long text. Yeah, yeah, I know. But like, but I would, I'd be willing to suspect that there, there are plenty of people, myself included, that have sent four sentences. I'm not going to say I've never done it, but like, even if I were going to do that, I would probably just send four one sentence text messages. Oh, sure, sure. You yeah, know, that, like that's one thought. And then while you're reading that one, let me follow up. And then while you're reading that one, let me follow up. Right, you know? right, yeah. More engagement. You know? I mean, exactly. <laughs> if so. I send you a one four sentence block of text, you're going to be like, I'll read that later. It's, <laughs> it's the hilarious difference between people saying that a three hour movie is too long, but we'll regularly watch like a 12 hour TV show. Oh, man. Beth has this exact like thing. She's like, like, we will sit there and we'll watch. Yeah, yeah. Three, three one hour long episodes of a show in a row. No problem. But if I'm like, do you want to watch a two hour movie? she's just like i'm gonna fall asleep i'm like i don't see what the like i guess the difference is that like every individual episode has like baked in ups and downs to continue to draw you in right whereas a movie will have that as well but it'll only have all those things once and they will all be drawn out much further because they are fitting the story into a bigger block yes yes but so anyway but back to your back to your your texting related thing so yeah i mean even even jay like when writing on a script which would be the 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 lengths of time that i would i would expect you to type the most in one go you'd think yeah even then i mean because we'll you know we're writing multi-page long scripts but like even then there's usually times where you have to like break in order to do like an additional piece of like research or like contemplate how you like where you want to go next or right. like what like you know so it's like you're, you're usually not typing like full bore for like long lengths of time yeah so anyway the other day though i'm like listening to day, jay and i'm like wait a second this sounds weird this sounds really weird and then like and then like i'm stopping what i'm doing i'm like yo what's going on over there <laughs> so apparently this is that this is that i'm yes, about to this find is out a, okay yeah you can you can find out the 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 story i was typing so basically this was like almost like a, over a week ago now but we were we were this the setting is we're about to sit down for dinner yeah right and it, it sounds like such a simple request from my son Luke and he says daddy can I have a banana okay okay and it just like the like psychological like like breakdown it gave me was like tr- tremendous like in like what like you know in the span of a second like all of this kind of goes through my mind because like he's asking can I have a banana and like so what because at first I'm like it sounds like oh you want a piece of fruit of course have a piece of fruit right, right. yeah but there's so much more to it than that because on the one hand, we're also about to sit down for dinner, which Beth has already like, you know, cooked and prepared and um, gotten together for the whole family. It's like, and banana is not on the menu, right? Sure. So like, there's already food available to you right now. And of that food is a sliced apple and some grapes. Okay. So other fruit is already available to you on the table for dinner. Okay. Okay. Right. So it occurs to me that when he asked me for the banana, that it's almost more of like a a bid at being disagreeable at like controlling my fruit intake. Like you want to feed me these things too bad. I want that thing. You know, right. The situation. In fact, this is almost certainly the play. Okay. Because Luke, Luke is, you know, he likes to be in control. Okay. He likes to be in control. So if he wants to try the banana, if he wants, if he wants to choose his fruit, that's like his way of being in control of his food. This is, this has been like my common sentiment lately is that I feel like almost all discretion between people boil down to a lack of sense of control yeah. or fear of the unknown. Right. It's like almost everything is one of those two things. Right. And in a weird way, this is sort of butting up against both. Okay. Because on the one hand, because so anyway, he's, he, he asked me for the banana and I'm like, 
there's not really any harm in giving it to him. Okay. You know, right? But the reason, the only reason we have bananas is I'm the only one in the house who eats them. Okay. And by eating them, I mean I put them in my morning smoothie. Yeah, of course. And so if I give him a banana, it'll just mean that my my banana supply is now one day short. Sure. Which is not like a huge problem. Bananas are extremely easy to come by. Sure. But replacing one banana is going to like it they are weirdly it's going to require a bunch of effort to get more bananas. Okay. You know, you're going to have to go to the store. You're going to have to door dash them. You're going to have to make a stop somewhere to pick up a second set of bananas. Sure. When this one runs out. So there is some cost to doing it. And my, but at the same time, I don't want to like, he is asking to try a food he does not traditionally go for. Right. Okay. Right. Yep, yep. So there's that part of it, though. He's saying, like, I want a banana. And so part of me is like, well, on the other hand, I don't want to say no just because those are my bananas and because I know you're being contradictory right now. Because on the other hand, like you are asking to try a new food. And, and it's I, a healthy food. And it's a healthy food on top of that. And it's like... I don't want to like, like if you're willing to try new things, I want to encourage that behavior. So I don't want you to have like asked to try something new, especially something healthy that's good for you and then said no. Sure. (laughs) So so even though I'm almost positive, one, that you don't really want a banana and two, that you're not going to like it. Right. But nonetheless, nonetheless, I'm like, there is the possibility that if I give it to you, you will like it. And if you do like it, this is an enormous win. Right. Overall, because then... Yeah, well, I was going to say, like, the, I mean, the frequency at which, like, you know, Addy will ask me for, like, just one piece of candy. Yeah. You know, it's sort of like, it's <clears> like you, you you are constantly having to say no. Yeah. So the opportunity to be like, you want something that I can say yes to? It's like, that's pretty tempting. Exactly. Exactly. So it's like, and not only that, like, bananas are... I mean, if your kid will eat a banana, I mean... What an enormous day for you. Right. Because, like, one, bananas are extremely cheap. They are also quite filling in their own right, and they're good for you. Right. So it's like there is there is almost no downside to it if he wants it, if he enjoys it. Right. But is he just being disagreeable, which is like 95% chance the case. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and in which case, I will be down a smoothie. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then it's like, then, it's, then it becomes a net loss. And then it becomes a net. So it's like, it feels like all indicators are at this is not going to work out, but the potential upside is so great. Right. So ultimately, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give him the banana. Okay. Remember, he already has fruit on the table anyway. And fruit he likes. You know, he likes apples and grapes. Sure. So anyway. I was trying to make a pun on the benefit of the doubt and call it the banana of the doubt. And I was like, I don't know if it works that well. But anyway, give him the banana of the doubt. Giving him, giving him the banana of the doubt. I decide I'm going to give him the banana. Of course, he can't open it. So, um, but he like it, like he doesn't know how to like open a banana. Right. But. He still wants to peel it because let's face it, peeling a banana is like one of the coolest features of a banana. It is. It is it's like the handy. fun part. Yeah. So I peel the top part of it to him and he wants to peel the rest. So I hand that to him and he peels it way too far down. The weight of the fruit collapses and it falls in half. Oh, no. <laughs> so half the banana lands on the floor. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> and he's holding the other half, and now, and this is this is the worst case scenario because now <laughs> I've given him I've given him the banana, and now he and like I'm like no it's okay it's okay like he will not eat the one that's on the floor because now it's dirty yeah which sure. is like totally fine right and I'm like I mean of of all the foods to fall on the floor a banana does seem like kind of low on the list for potential can, like can can get, like still edible. Like, like you shouldn't eat it. Like you shouldn't eat it. Yeah. Like it's it, got it, like a moistness to a, it. A moistness. Like, yeah, it, like it, it's, it's absorbing the germs. Yeah. Like, like as if it was designed to do so. Exactly. Yeah. Now the good news is though, that if half a banana falls on the floor, you're still holding the other half. Right. Right. To any non, um, child, this would be perfect logic. You're going to say, ah, oh, man, I lost half a banana. Good thing. I can still eat the other half. Right. But if you're six years old, this is like hurricane nine you know like this is this is the worst that's ever happened to you and not only is the part of the banana on the floor not edible but if you think i'm going to take a bite out of this banana you're outside of your mind i want a (laughs) brand new banana now i'm like now i'm about to be (laughs) down two bananas two two smoothie days two smoothie days that's it i'm going to the store what's the point of even eating dinner exactly (laughs) like 
oh no like just and i'm like because now i have to go through the entire process again except now he's also screaming that the banana is broken and of course it's my fault you know oh yeah naturally yeah. Naturally, nothing's yeah. his fault what were, what were you thinking what was i thinking ending of the banana and oh i eventually i eventually convince him that the banana in his hand is like still edible and totally clean and he can just eat that and if he wants it and if he eats it i'll give him a whole nother banana and he finally agrees to take a bite out of that one and he doesn't like it so no (laughs) after all that i know i know (laughs) oh my gosh oh my gosh man so you're down two bananas and no i didn't know i did save the other one oh you did did. yeah okay okay. yeah i did i did manage to let to make to to convince him to try the half that was left in his hand okay 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 i was gonna say one of my pro tips when it comes to bananas is that when they do become like a little bit like overripe yeah it's usually not a bad opportunity to like peel them and then freeze them and then put those bananas into your smoothie because then it's like a like a instead of using like ice you've got your frozen banana which serves as the ice it serves as the ice and i have done this and we like if bananas go too bad like i will still i will do this instead of like just tossing them sure sure. obviously but um i have found that the overall smoothie is a lot worse if you use frozen bananas, just because frozen ban- like a regular banana, a frozen banana will get is way like um, it makes it a lot thicker, ah, like sure. significantly so, like in a in a really noticeable way. So, fresh banana, less thick overall smoothie. Okay, is okay. My thought here. So, what's your banana story? <laughs> Well, I have to tell you that my banana story didn't cause me to write like a full length, uh, you know, 50,000 word essay. Yeah. Um, however, I, I got a text from Alice yesterday. And so, like I said, I mean, Addy will, Addy definitely, I, I think it's probably a little bit of like the same control thing, but like she will ask me in particular for food a lot. Like, like so often to the point where Alice is definitely like, Ben, you, you need to like not permit her. Like she needs to have very, very specific and designated like snack times because otherwise she is just going to always, always, always be snacking and it's going to become a problem. But my, my major exception to this is that pretty much for years now, she has been a huge fan of like apples. Yeah. And so it's always like one of those things where she's like, can I have an apple? And it's like, oh, of course you can. Like you can always have an apple. So it, it ends up working out quite well because, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't ever mind giving it to her. But so then one of the big things as well, though, is, is similarly like, you know, if she asked for, a, I don't, I, just depending on what she asked for, there's always that possibility that she might end up not actually liking it. And then you've gone through and like made like a can of soup or whatever. And she eats none of it. And you're like, oh, well, now either I'm going to eat this can of soup or it's just going to go to waste. And that yeah. feels like, you know, I, well, I mean, inherently you try not to waste anything ever. Um, but yeah. so this Allie, is the problem that I will make the kids stuff. And I was like, well, I don't want it to go to waste. So I'll eat it. And then it's like, now I feel worse about myself. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, but anyway, yeah, so Allie just texted me yesterday and she's like, Ben, you were not going to believe this. And I'm like, what's going on? She's like, okay, Addie just asked for a banana. And I'm like, whoa, no way. And she's like, no, 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 it gets even better. She ate the whole thing. Oh. And I was like, what? Oh. You are joshing me right Man. now. And she wasn't even joshing me at all. It was wow. She was straight for cereal. That is awesome. Which hilariously is something else she occasionally requests. But yeah. Um, yeah. So then, but then, so then this morning, you know, it was really funny because she was eating a banana and she could tell I was really excited that she was eating a banana. And I was like, Addy, that's so great. And she's like, daddy want a bite? And so then she brings it over and I took a bite. But then I sort of back to it closer to your story the bite that i took was too irregular oh. and caused the top of the banana to no longer be flat how dare you and i know so then and then i was like okay so now whenever addy is eating a banana and she offers me some of her banana i have to take a very very specific and careful kind of bite yeah in order to you know leave her with a with a like a, a, a banana related situation that she's comfortable with right exactly yeah yeah, yeah. so anyway um my mine was a lot shorter but when you said that that what here, what went through my head was I was like I wonder if something is happening inside of like the the zeitgeist of, of small children right, right now yeah. like where like Miss Rachel or something is like doing banana <laughs> like <laughs> snacking and I'm like bananas are hot man <laughs> bananas are in I was like you know like what what is it what is going on is it like on their for you page or something no. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> bananas the avocados Woo! of the day um, banana toast it's uh, incoming <laughs> it's incoming actually you know that doesn't sound so bad because <laughs> I'm like a sweet and salty you know yeah. Like, 
to, you do bananas on like French toast, no problem. Yeah. Now, now I'm trying to think. Salty bananas is that the most horrifying thought imaginable? I know, this is like, I mean, I'm sure we're sitting here like salt bananas on toast. Like it's kind of weird, but I'm like, I'm sure this is exactly what everyone was like with like avocados on toast. What's wrong with them? I know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, that's it's like I've said before, but I feel like avocados are, are largely like they're almost like without flavor, so they are just a vehicle for <coughs> carrying like a little bit of like salt and pepper on top. In yeah. which case, it's just like it's like having thick flavorless butter that's green yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly right avocado Mostly. toast yeah delicious exactly who knew it's so good <laughs> but it's toast coming soon coming soon man maybe from like, gen alpha yeah there you go <laughs> yep there that's 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 the new thing so i just couldn't believe it though because it, this has just happened in the past 24 hours of my life wow so yeah she had a banana yesterday and she was eating it when i got home from work and then when uh we got up this morning we were like you know going through and doing breakfast and everything we've been making her dinosaur egg oatmeal which is all about that's but that's pretty good good one she is she is so tenacious because she really likes to be involved with the the manufacturing process of any meals that we're having yeah. oh, so okay. like if, if there's cooking involved she wants to, to play a role well i would just encourage that to yeah. some degree yeah. yeah for sure but so like what usually happens though with specifically the dinosaur egg oatmeal is i'll tear the lid off and we're going to pour it in like her like little silicone bowl that she uses and the second that i pour it into the bowl her fingers are in there like the most sophisticated claw machine you've ever seen because i will have like the the hot prepared milk ready to be poured in yeah and i mean it's it's literally like i mean seconds i mean she's just like i mean she'll have like four dinosaur eggs that she's pulled out of the <laughs> dinosaur egg, and there's only like seven yeah you know like yeah really she's just, by the end of it she's just eating regular oatmeal and yes she is just eating yeah. regular oatmeal but to be fair usually it's like what, what i started doing was like if she sees the dinosaur egg she'll like, be like i want a green one in the next bite and it's like okay it's like we're out of green ones and it's like no i want a red one it's like okay we're out of red ones so then i just started like the egg is hiding inside of the bite she's like the egg's hiding inside of the bite <laughs> so then she'll just eat regular oatmeal and it's just there like there, there is no egg hiding oh. <laughs> so, i'm sorry addison if you're listening right now yeah from the future if like the, what yeah. a minute dad so, wait 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 i thought i was what? enjoying delicious <laughs> candied dinosaur shapes Man. and instead i was just eating regular brown sugar oatmeal oh. Man, okay. Let me ask you if you think this is a, a a a failing at breakfast or a succeeding at breakfast. Okay, lay it on me. Okay, so if you will recall from our childhood when we would have breakfast, we would have cereal. Cereal, cereal. Yeah. We every had cereal day. basically every single day of every our day. entire childhood. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which honestly i loved so I, <laughs> like exactly everybody came down not what do you want for breakfast what cereal do you want right yeah. right and by and when i look back i'm like man mom really i mean she she like got that like we, it didn't even occur to us it, it didn't occur to me to like ask for something else for breakfast no yes yeah, on the weekend maybe you could ask for toast yeah. or maybe they were making like pancakes and bacon or something yeah we would do i mean i think like on on weekends we would usually have have that and then like friday night actually i think for like like 30 years our dad has gone to dunkin donuts and bought yeah. like a dozen donuts uh -huh. for like the tv station and so we would usually ha also have dunkin donuts on saturday morning exactly because yeah because we, we, we would have had them from friday night exactly yeah yep, yep. so he still does it to this day i know yeah it's it is wild. unbelievable yeah i love it i love it though the dedication such, such a commit great to yeah, the bit way to go dad yeah friday night Carlin's bringing donuts. Yes, exactly. Yes. You know, rely on it. Rely on w -S -L -S. it. WSLS. Fan favorite in the office. <clears throat> anyway, so continue though. So cereal for breakfast. Cereal for breakfast. That's what we had every single day. It might, like when I look back on it, it's it must have been, it was so efficient. It, I mean, it's very efficient. But the, the one thing that I would say about eating cereal is that it, it, it makes me hungrier than eating nothing. So if I wake up in the morning and have a bowl of cereal, then by like 10 a.m., my stomach has like been activated. It's like, mm. okay, you you ate something which wasn't enough calories for you. Okay, ben, let me ask what kind of cereal what kind of cereal do you eat over there? I'm not eating raisin bran, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> well, maybe that's your problem. For free. I don't know. No, like, I'm having like, smoothies for breakfast right now, so. So you're good. So I'm good. I'm not going. But when I do have cereal, it is raisin bran. Yeah, I know it also, is. Also, you could you could eat more cereal. <laughs> Anyway, that's not the point. Okay. The genius behind the way mom had it set up is that there was that everyone knew that what what was what was for breakfast. Okay. You know? Yeah. So on the other hand, for my kids this morning, it is like on a case by case basis what each child wants for breakfast. Oh dear. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So, that I mean that sounds challenging. Yes. So like this morning I had to make 
ham sandwiches for Luke, cereal for Nick, and sausage for Nate. Wow. And I made them all. <laughs> You're going all out, man. I'm very I'm, impressed. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> It's <laughs> just like, and I can usually most days I can get Nick and Nate both on cereal. I was surprised Nate went for the sausage today. Okay. And because normally I try and phrase it like I'm like, you guys want some cereal? Uh, I shouldn't even say that. I should say, what cereal do you want for breakfast? Yeah. This is the phrasing <laughs> problem. I know. Yeah. Not, like, do you want cereal? Right, right. What cereal do you want? Summon your inner uh, inner hour mom. I know. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> do that. <laughs> and, but the thing is, if I ask them if they want cereal, Nick and Nate are usually just like, a, a, they're normally a yes. Okay. Okay. And they'll go for it. Luke, Luke, Luke won't because I suggested it, you know, like that as I, the, I going back to the banana thing, it's like he needs to be in control of the situation. <laughs> yeah. It, like that's more of like a game of chess. <clears throat> yeah. You know, exactly. so it's like, Jay, you should be treating, you should be treating morning breakfast routine more like how you treat like uh, a, a collective game of Mario party. Exactly. Yeah. It, right. It's sort of like, okay, they think I'm going to go left up here. So I'm going to go. Right I'm going instead. right. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing? Do you yeah. think? You, hey, yeah. Steal a star, man. Exactly. Well, the, we've gotten the the ham sandwich is pretty much Luke's go to breakfast thing. Okay. Okay. Most days. A ham which sandwich. Is, well, it's I say ham sandwich. It's like the Hawaiian rolls. You oh, know? yeah. Those are delicious. Yeah. So yeah. it's the Hawaiian rolls with just like a piece of like, you know, a piece of deli ham on okay. it. And then I'll microwave it for like 15 seconds. So <laughs> for a while, he also wanted ranch and mustard on them. <laughs> He's you, off that. Have you considered opening a brec- a breakfast establishment? <laughs> no. Jay's, Jay's famous ham biscuits. That's right. Jay, Jay's famous ham biscuits. They're, they're from the microwave. <laughs> from the microwave. That's right. Oh, man. So that's, yes. Yeah, so Luke normally has his little But yeah, today, um, yeah, I had to make all three different things. Fortunately, it was pizza day at lunch. So Luke was just buying. Okay. Didn't have to pack a lunch this morning. There you go. And I'm also recovering from uh, norovirus. Um, as we speak, which hit my family hard this past weekend. It is so it is so rough. I mean, it's like it's like any kind of sick that you're ever feeling is always the worst. But but stomach sick, I do think is the worst. Oh, my God. I was I was having that just this thought this weekend. I was like, I remembered back over uh, Christmas break when we were all suffering from COVID and it was like, oh my gosh, you know what's the worst? Headaches and fevers. Headaches and fevers are the absolute worst possible you can feel. And then this weekend I was like, you know what's really the worst? Nausea. Nausea is the worst you could feel. Nausea is the worst you can <laughs> and feel. And then it, it was like, terrible. you know what's the worst? Bowel movements. Bowel movements are the worst <laughs> you can feel. <laughs> <laughs> just like whatever you're currently suffering from, that's probably the worst you could feel. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm going to make it <laughs> I was like that was like a slow burn. My like laugh became more <laughs> laughter as I was laughing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, it's been a really long weekend at my house in those regards. I, I yeah, I am very sorry about that. And and I know that like I know that's been very difficult and it's like a, like such an uphill battle. And then the other thing about it is that we you and I both because because Beth and Alice are going to our cousins bridal shower in New York State yeah. this upcoming weekend. It means that both me and you are on solo dad duties yeah. start, starting Friday through end of day Monday. Yeah. Um yeah. so we we've got like big big parent weekends ahead. We sure do. I, w- what is where's your mind at? What is your strategy going into the the big game as it were? I know, I know. So there's a matter of trying to figure out if like how I'm part of it's figuring out like will I be coming into work or are these like work from home days? Can someone come like do I need to like I obviously have to take everyone to school in the morning. Sure. But then is there like oh someone could pick them up in the afternoon and I'll just, you know, they they can watch them in the afternoon or something. So I'm sort of working out or or do I just need a just work from home is it too much to try and coordinate this with other people because the, the the main person i would normally ask is like mom and she'll be gone she, obviously she, she, per she, the same trip yeah she's part of the convoy so there's that and then like the the area of the afternoon is like around like you know two o'clock or so which is typically when dad goes into work right so it doesn't yeah. seem like he's a great option there and then there's like i could probably get beth's parents in on it but you know well her mom still works and then it's just her dad so whom it maybe he'd be up for it we'll see 
Maybe he doesn't want to spend his afternoon in retirement doing this, though. I don't know. In my mind, I'm like, we are like three, two and a half days from this being our, our reality yeah. for, <laughs> to, to be sorting through the logistics. So it sounds like you're going to be working from home is what what I what I feel like will happen. You already have this logistics sorted out? I have the logistics sorted out. Yeah, oh, okay. I, I'm covered. I'm covered okay. for, yeah. for Friday and Monday. But then all day Saturday, all day Sunday, I'll be, I'm going to be, me and Addy are just going to go on adventures and stuff. Okay. What yeah. kind of adventures are you going to go on? I'm not sure. I'm thinking trampoline park. That sounds fun. Seems like a, like a good place to go. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, I mean, I feel like the last time we went, somehow me and you both ended up being on the phone the entire time that we were at the trampoline park. And it was like, yeah. one of the, it was one of those parenting moments where I was like, oh no, it's like, it's like you see it happen in the TV shows and the movies. And there's like that classic parent who's like pulled away from like the birthday party to have yeah. to go and do like a work related thing. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is us right now. Like we are the people standing in the corner on our cell phones looking at each other. I know. <laughs> Oh, I know. Uh, but otherwise, Addy had an absolute blast. So I was thinking that'd be like a good opportunity. That and is a good one. I, I am having so much fun right now because Addy is like slowly but surely aging into the ability to like go and do like activities mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Whereas before, you know, it's like you go into the weekends and it's sort of like, okay, we are going to sit and play with magnet tiles, which honestly are super fun. In case yeah. You've never played with magnet tiles before. Uh, that's almost all I do. Yeah. I feel like it's like one of those toys where it's like maybe, maybe adults should just have more magnet tiles as well because it's almost like, it's like Legos, but, or, or a Lego. I feel like I'm trying to get better at, at not pluralifying Lego. Lego. Yeah. Because it's just Lego. Right. Right. Um, but I feel like there is something extremely satisfying about the ease of building a structure that you then get to just like demolish right like and it's like no problem there's yeah no, there's no love lost over it you're not like oh man oh you'd think that there's oh. plenty of love lost over destroyed magic tile buildings at my house oh <laughs> <laughs> well usually usually for me it's just like i'm trying to build a tower as fast as i can and addy is trying to watch and wait for it to be uh to, to reach its critical mass yeah as it were before she goes into full uh godzilla mode right and just annihilates it right yeah it was so. the goal oh, maybe i should just introduce this just build stuff for the sake of destroying exactly yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh yeah but like yeah. <clears throat> well, I say a lot of what happens is that you, you don't have to deal with like this the sibling aspect of it where yeah, you know, this is true. This is true. <laughs> someone is someone is really focused on building something else and someone else is focused on ruining their day. <laughs> 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 oh, it takes one. <laughs> one person didn't get, get to control the outcome, and the other person definitely did. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, so, what, what a power or, play. or two of them are just wrestling, and they run into someone else's thing. Yeah. Or someone hits, or, or you know, we have, we also have like the, the, the super mag, like the, I don't even know if they're what they're called, like super tiles or something. Oh yeah, yeah. They're, they're like magnet tiles, but like, but like feet long. Yeah, they're like giant, like supersized like felt magnet tiles that you can build like houses out of that you can go in yes they are so cool and uh we got we got like a an extra like an upgrade to our set for the twins birthday and they've been building all sorts of fun stuff with them and that's really cool but sometimes because they can be inside them like you know you can build like tunnels and stuff but there's always like that uh that like one tile where like just even just playing in it normal if someone like elbows the wrong tile on the side and like lodges it free like it could start a domino effect that the whole thing comes tumbling down and then it's just like everyone was having fun and all of a sudden a complete accident it's chaos and it's like oh no (laughs) and it's like i so understand and it's like everyone's mad at that that kid (laughs) i understand why you're mad at them and i also understand that it's a complete accident and also it's pretty easy to rebuild so let's focus on that let's do that (laughs) right 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 yeah 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 yeah. big big intent versus impact situation exactly right yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. it's like no one meant to do anything uh, man, but yeah, Magnet House, super good toy. They are indeed. Yeah. So looking, looking forward to a big weekend of construction. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of that. Weirdly in my head, one of the things I have been trying to determine whether or not I will be capable of working on is, um, the garden. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> we, are, we are at that time of year. Again, it is we? like that time of year. We're like, I want to, I want to work on it at some point. And I know that working on it will involve like probably renting or borrowing some sort of like rototiller type situation just to like junk up all the weeds and get them out of there. Get them out of there. Retill the land, put down some new topsoil and stuff like that. Um, and it's like, I, I feel like it's the right time of year. Um, what I feel like I, 
I am like, I keep thinking about like wondering, like, can I do it this weekend? And I'm like, I'll, it'll just be me and the kids. And I'm like, could I do it anyway? Like, will the, how much, how much harder will it make it? Or will it be like, yeah, you guys just play over there and I'll be over here. Or, you know, like I, part of me thinks it's doable and part of me thinks I'm crazy for even considering it. No, I, I know exactly where you're coming from because <laughs> I, I just had an instance a couple of weekends ago where I was I was needing to mow the lawn really for the first time because I was having everybody over for like Easter Sunday. And so I'm like out there mowing the lawn. It was it was kind of a similar instance where like Alice was also trying to like prepare the house. And so we had like all of our doors open. So like Addie yeah. could like freely roam from like pretty much anywhere. I mean, she could go in and out of the house and because our whole yard is fenced in, she could just sort of like you know go back and forth so at one point in time it was actually quite adorable but then i was also like worried about the safety of the situation yeah but she comes over she says i'm mowing the lawn she's very interested in the fact that i'm mowing the lawn it's yeah. way more interesting than like the the vacuum cleaner that's running inside of the house yeah. so she just comes over and reaches up and holds my hand and so i got like my headphones on and everything and i'm like in the zone like mowing so she just holds my hand and we go back and forth and we're mowing the lawn, like literally half of my lawn. I'm just holding on to the mower with one hand <laughs> and holding her hand with the other. <laughs> so if at any point in time anybody walked by, they would have just seen this grown man holding a, a two and a half year old hand. Adorable. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it was it was extremely cute, but it was also I was like, I, like I'm I'm moving something that by design is is a is a fan where the the, the blade is a, is a sharp steel blade. Yeah. You know, it's like you know it, it I, I i worried i worried that like if something like kicked out or anything like that it was like okay could this could this, could this be dangerous so maybe maybe a tad bit but she i think very much enjoyed uh getting to go and do do yard yeah, work yeah well so. yeah it, it hopefully that sticks with her and then at some point she'll just be like dad can i mow the lawn and be like of course you definitely course. can mow the lawn yeah you know what maybe if you, you know what you can pay me if you give me five bucks you could mow the lawn that's it that's it you, you have to rent the lawn you can rent the lawn mower from yeah, me yeah <laughs> I love it. That would be the greatest con of all time. That would be like the ultimate like millennial, like, (coughs) like no matter what mowing the lawn comes with $5. No matter what. Because like when we were kids, it's like, all right, I'll pay you $5 to mow the lawn. It's like deal. Yeah. And like we grew up to be parents who charge our kids $5 to mow the lawn. Yeah. Yeah. I remember our, okay. So this was, I was looking, I was on Zillow the other day and I was looking at our, um, what the, when we were, I was looking at our neighbor's house from when we were growing up. Our babysitter's house? Our, yeah, I guess our babysitter's house. Mama Scott's. Mama Scott. I was okay. looking at Mama Scott's house because since we have been there, it has been largely renovated on the inside. Oh, and it's no so way. interesting to like look at all the pictures from the inside and be like, oh, I remember this room and I remember that room. And like, you know, the room we used to sit in and like watch TV is not like just like an office, you know. Huh. The den? The den, yeah. And then I like like the kitchen is still like the same layout. It looks like much nicer, but it's the same layout. And I'm like, how on earth did she fit a table in here. You know, I'm like, is it a small room? It's a small room. No way. Yes. I'm like, this is such a small little thing there. Like now there's not a table in there and I'm like, there's barely room for anything in here. <clears throat> That's so How interesting work? because I mean, maybe we were just so small. We had no idea. Exactly, yeah. Or, or like, is there, is it possible the table that I remember in my mind was actually like a kid size table, but I don't think so. I, no. think it was the, I don't know. It seems it like must have been. Table. It must have just been like narrower than I r- remember or something. Right, right, or maybe okay. it was just really cramped in there and it just didn't feel that way because just you, you know, your little kid. Weird. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so I was looking through that. But as part of it, I was um, looking at the 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 lawn of the house because I, I had to mow this lawn yeah, so yeah. many times. I remember this. Yeah. Yeah. And I would get paid. I get paid 20 bucks for it, which when, you know, you're, you know, eight is like you know, it's enormous yeah there's so much money um which was great but i was like i was looking at it and i was like trying to think like as a kid it felt like it was so big and it was such a massive thing and i was looking at it over the weekend and i decided that it is so big oh really it's just like there is so much grass <laughs> No, like, okay. <laughs> I was like 100%. I know where this is going. It's going to yeah. be like, like we used to be able to like throw the Frisbee, you know, from one end to the other. It's like, because it was like 20 feet, yeah. you know, it's like, it was a small flat backyard, but no, it was big. It's a big yard. It's a big yard. Okay. Big yard. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Big area for, tra- I'm like, you know, it's 20, but I was still pretty happy with the 20 bucks. I mean, adjusted for inflation, it was probably more like, like 47. So probably something like that. Not so bad. These days I'd be expecting, you know, like 70 or something. Whoa. I don't know. I don't know. No, no, probably not. You should go down and offer. Yeah, go down and offer and yeah. be like, hey, you know what? But I have like, some experience with like, this yard. I have a lot of experience with this, this yard. This yard. In particular. You want to see my resume? Yeah. Yeah, I've 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 cut some grass here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. I know what I'm doing. I know that one spot. 
you yeah. know. It's right. Where the roots. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you get rid of the bushes. That was a good call. That was nice. Smart. In the way. In the way. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Kept the gravel driveway. Don't know why. How about that? No yeah. one has fixed the gravel driveway yet. It's still there. <laughs> still there. Man. Too expensive to pave, I guess. I guess so. <laughs> Transition. <laughs> Transition. Burning. Okay, Jay, so from mowing the lawn to a potentially a deep thought question. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I don't even know if it's a deep thought. It's it's an interesting I, I was having I was driving the other day and this thought scrolled through my brain and I was like, okay, that's kind of interesting. Like I wonder if that's a thing. And I was like, if anything, if it was a thing, it's oddly comforting to me. And then I was like, I was like, I should bring this up on the pop. And then the more I thought about it, the more I was like, I like that it's comforting to me. I fear that it will not be comforting to others. Okay. And so I, I think that was, let me, let me preface with my hesitation and it's more of a question. I wouldn't say that this is like, this, this is not me saying like, like here is my ingrained observation of the world. I think this is the thing, but, but because it brought me comfort, it is the type of thing where I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe I want to present it. So the question is, is your faith in humanity as a whole a reflection of your own self image and i know it's kind of like a it's it's like a little bit like wordy but the sentiment would sort of be like like i i have always sort of like maintained a very strong faith in humanity i i have always believed that despite all of our faults like that we as a collective, you know, I mean, there's obviously going to be instances where some people are, are like negative and, and it's for reasons, whatever. But like, I have always believed that that what will persist is the good inside of all of us. Uh-huh. And so the, the sentiment examined is that like, I'm someone who struggles personally, like with my own confidence. I have like a lot of like anxiety, sort of like, you know, bouts of depression and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, sometimes I can be like frustrated, like with like my own mentality about things because it's, it's sort of like, I don't, I don't like that, that like those things are hard to overcome. Right. But then I was like, okay, if I have a lot of positive faith in humanity and that's me assuming that the rest of the world is like me, then it's kind of like, maybe that's not the worst thing in the world and maybe that makes me feel better about how i actually view myself do you, do you follow the logic um i think so like look i'm not sure whether or not this is the case or not why like, okay you made you made one bridge there it was like why is your faith in humanity based on the idea that everyone is like you well so that's that that would be sort of my thought is that like i think on some level you've only ever been able to exist inside of your own individual consciousness right yeah so so you all you can, of your you can only be the sum of your own experience exactly yeah exactly but but then so like but then when you think about the way that other people in the world think it's like you're going to be biased or skewed on some level because you don't know the ways in which people think potentially radically differently from the way that you think right. about things. Yeah. So on some level, your your perception may be that on the whole, everybody's basically like me, but with their own individual like, you know, ups and downs and, and all arounds that have happened to them throughout life. Mm-hmm. You know, their their own life experiences have baked a person who ends up being the way that that, that person is. Right. In, in some capacity. But yeah. But at the core, we're all like the 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 belief would be that like we're we're all we're all generally kind of like coming from like a similar place um, would, would be the extrapolation. So like, you know, if, if you're attempting to think about society as a whole, you, you think that there are other people out there or that all other people are in some way, shape or form kind of like you. OK, that would be my my thought or belief. Um and for for the purposes of this particular observation so it's sort of like okay if i think everybody's like me and i have faith in humanity then maybe that means i have faith in myself okay more more than i would normally like be able to um say out loud okay you know it's like it's like my own thoughts my own self-doubt yeah w- would lead me to believe that maybe my faith in myself is not very high right i see um however it's like but if everybody's like me and i feel good about everybody else then maybe that says something good about how I actually feel about myself. Oh, this is so interesting because when I read this in the show notes, it felt very much like the variable. It's like, it's like you've solved the problem with yourself as the variable rather than like humanity. Explain that to me. Cause I don't know. If okay. I so it's like, I thought you were going to be like, you have like, 
like um like because you experience self doubt you would assume that everyone experiences self doubt and that like humanity like you're you don't have tremendous faith in humanity then no 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 it's the exact opposite the right. exact opposite no i i do i do tend to have i would say like the the closest core belief that i that i do hold inside of my heart is is faith in humanity right like i i i do not have like the, i mean there's there's no doubt that as i've gotten older there's there's certain like areas where i've become like more jaded or cynical like i'm not immune yeah to, to that like I've, i think i've had enough things happen in enough common ways where it's like i i do possess some of that inside sure. of my myself but on the whole i think that people are, are trying really hard to make the world a better place for everyone sure um you know i I think on some level there there's times where it's like we can only succeed in that mission but so quickly Mm -hmm. however that that would sort of be like where where i'm usually positioned okay and and i I do think that that outlook tends to be it it, it keeps me like very grounded i think it keeps me optimistic okay um you know which is a good thing so again kind of like the the base premise would sort of be then like you know but but if you are highly cynical about humanity as a whole the populace it's like th- then this is where i worried that if i were to present this thought that you might be like oh wait a second <laughs> like if i have like a negative outlook on all of humanity and and i as an individual am assuming that all people are a little bit like me in some ways then does that sort of mean that your own self image might mean might might exist in a in a more negative capacity I see. does that make sense that was my it, concern it that, is that was my yeah, worry i guess yeah it's interesting that you're like it still feels like you're almost like reversing how i feel like it would that like the reflection would work like you're using like how how i view humanity is like how i am versus like like as if you don't know how you are I don't know how I am. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I, th- that's what I mean. Like, you know, it's like, I think being able to assess yourself without, I mean, cause you're highly biased towards you. Yeah. Like, but, but for me, I would say I'm biased towards me in a more negative capacity. I, right. I tend to think worse of myself than I think is probably overall warranted. Right. But so I think that the trick of the, of the, of the mental game is sort of like, what is your faith in humanity? Because what if that says something about how you actually feel about yourself? I see. And, and so I like, cause that's where I think the thought experiment can, can sort of like lull you like into like an interesting position. It's like, how do you feel about everybody else? And if you as an individual think everybody else is a little bit like you, then how you feel about everybody else is possibly a reflection back at yourself about how you feel about yourself. Right. Like humanity is good. I'm humanity. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm yes, good. I am good. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so there's that, but then the, then the flip side, like, I mean, I know, I know that it is not like an uncommon belief to be, to have cynicism towards humanity as a whole. There, sure. I mean, there are bad parts of it. There are dark corners. Like I'm not sure I consider humanity as a whole that often. Do you not? <laughs> not no, really. No, I, I think about it literally every single day. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> it's it's probably like one of my favorite things to to contemplate because because it's like it's so everywhere it's all the time and always i mean it is all the time and always for sure yeah it's just like i don't know if like humanity as a whole has like a hive mind collective goal that they're working towards or something no definitely you not. Know? yeah no i i don't i do not think we have a hive mind not, yeah not in any way certainly not yeah. yeah i'm not uh, sure i think there's a collective goal that everyone's working towards you don't not necessarily no Oh, interesting. No. Okay. Like I like not that I even think it's the same goal. Like right. I, I think that like lots of people are like if you if you imagine it like a like a sphere and everybody's trying to like push the outside edges of the sphere, all of all of the the edges, you know, are being pushed off in, in a million different directions mm-hmm. in a myriad of different like, you know, degrees and stuff like that. But everybody is like attempting well, well, I mean, like I, I would say that's like that is like the overall sentiment of like progress in general. Towards what though? Toward, towards like greaterness, like more, more safety, more comfort, more health, more uh, access to resources, that, that type of thing. Okay. That would, that would be my, that would be my belief that like, that is what we're attempting to, to create. Right. So like the goal of like, everyone's on like everyone, like I, so like everyone is their own person with their own goals and their own cultures and stuff. But like we, the entirety of team human are working towards something. Yeah. Right. Yes. Which is the continued survival of team human. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Sure. But, but you, but you do or do not think that. I mean, I think everyone's trying to work on like the, 
you know, continued survival of the, the human race. Sure. Yeah. But like, I think that's like a, uh, an innate instinct born into every species ever. Right. Yeah. I mean, yes, yeah, survival is survival is at the core of, of all of all species, but we are we are more intelligent than all other species. Oh yeah, we're crushing it. There's no doubt. Yeah, <laughs> we're way better at it. Yes, we we we've, we've been able to build tools and such. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no um, but so yeah, so I don't know. I mean, that's that's like wh- whether or not it's sort of like like I think I think like in the age of in- innovation, for example, it's sort of like how can we create like more you know comfort for ourselves or or like lessen the tasks that you know we are required to do at home that are like otherwise cumbersome or distract us from like our pursuits and stuff like that it's like mm-hmm. we've been able to like create a like a lot of those things and then in in doing that it sort of like creates other problems but then i would also say that i think that humanity like sees those other problems and then we're like okay let's go and try to fix those problems so that like we can continue to expand in this exact same way but do it like responsibly mm-hmm. you know and, and that's the thing is that like i think you know every action has a reaction and i think that we always see the reactions then we work to solve the reactions so that we can continue to create new actions sure so that would be that would be the belief right i i mean that all makes sense yes i, I agree i'm so curious because like as i'm like looking at you i feel like i can like see your pulse rise and i can like you almost seem like visibly like upset i'm not no i'm certainly not like upset i'm just like it's like uh, there's like a there's like a i think when I when I feel like when I talk to people about this, it's like, uh, like what are we as humanity doing? It's like, like, like we, me, and you in this room, like nothing, you know. Like what are what are you doing to, like, you know, I I don't know, like, like like so I I think that like maybe maybe uh I I mean if I'm understanding correctly, the the question might be like on a very granular level, like like each individual person, right is is probably not out there necessarily with this like active pursuit as the fundamental objective of their existence right but but i do think that like on the whole like those i mean and and so maybe it's the case that like it's it's like someone somewhere will always like rise to the occasion even if it's not every single person inside of every single society all doing that particular thing. Right. And, and so maybe what's happening is you, you know, you have pioneers in any one, one area who are attempting to go and do that. And like, then like lift the opportunities and abilities for all other people. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think that that absolutely is true. I think yeah, you're right. Like, like people will like, if there, if there's a problem, large groups of people will identify it. And then like, it will eventually get solved by people working on it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like problems will like, create opportunities for people to solve them right right exactly and, and i mean i think that this is sort of like the underlying spirit of like every like superhero you know story that you've ever seen is that is that usually the underlying objective is is to make it such that like people are allowed to continue to live like a, a happy healthful existence right you know so it's like you you go and you save the world not necessarily because saving the world will like um reduce all conflict to zero, but it allows that conflict to exist in a way that hopefully is, is moving all of us, all of society, all of humanity in a, in a positive direction. Sure. You know, and, that, and that's the reason that it's worth preserving. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I, th- yeah. I think we're on the same page. I think so. Maybe, maybe poorly communicated. <laughs> okay. We'll go with that. We'll go with that. But otherwise, yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's, is that, that, that's something I'd be very, I'd be very curious about to like lob out to, the community to kind of get like their feedback. Like, like, is this something like, you know, does, does your, do you feel like there's any world where your faith in humanity could, could reflect back upon yourself? Because this, this was sort of like the, the thought that scrolled through, like I said, I mean, and I think it, it brought me some comfort, but then I also worried that it could bring some discomfort as well. So that's, that's sort of where it's like, what, what's, what's the feedback there? What are your thoughts? Right. Um, so yeah, you can email me at popcorn culture pot at gmail.com. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think, yeah, I don't know if there's. Uh, yeah, it's like I don't know if they're necessarily related. It feels like they they would be that if you have like an, a positive outlook on things, like um, then you would also have a positive outlook on yourself as well, or or vice versa. Like if you have a positive outlook on yourself, like would that also reflect like your view the other way? Explain. Like, do you like do you think like if you have like a positive outlook on yourself? then you're more likely to have a positive view on humanity. Well, so that that would be that's sort of like where I'd be coming from is that like I think that 
it's the it it is the perception of my own self that I that I have that I struggle with more. Right. Like I I I, I struggle to know how to perceive myself. So I, I think that like what I'm using is the example of sort of like look at the look at the reflection out there in the world and see what's coming back to you. Mm. And if you feel good about what comes back, then may, maybe that's you projecting out into the world, letting it bounce off of everything and then like when the signals come back to you, you can interpret what you're seeing. Okay. You know, which which would be you know, like I don't know, that's 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 how I would be looking at it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This okay. That's so interesting that you don't have like a good that you don't feel like you have like a good perception of yourself. Then. Yeah. No, I don't. Not at all. I mean, that's that's the challenge. Is that like like I think it's hard to know the perception of yourself. Like right. because because it is so like well maybe not maybe perception is the wrong word. It's difficult to know how you're perceived by other people, right. but like it's not necessarily hard to know how you perceive yourself. That 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 is what I do think is difficult. Okay, to know how to perceive myself. Okay, yeah. and and maybe that is more again, you know, more specific to me. And my belief would be that more people also feel this way. Mm-hmm. Um, but that that's the exact sentiment that I that I'm working off of here. It's like because I feel this way, I assume other people feel this way. But maybe that's also inaccurate. Okay. You know, like, like in, in the same way that maybe like your, your key objective is not like, I don't wake up every day thinking about like, Oh, how am I going to make the world a better place today or something like that? And it's like, I don't think anybody feels that way, but like that, that could be you assuming other people also share your sentiment. Right. You know, and it's like, but that may not be the case. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily roll out of bed like, how am I going to make the world a better place today? <laughs> right. Necessarily. Um, I never, I mean, I'm like, you know, how am I going to continue to, you know, provide for my family and entertain our audiences and, you know, provide, um, you know, for our, our staff and stuff like that. Right. All right. is all important to me. <laughs> yes. Yes. Those yeah. are, those are important. Uh, yes, yeah. absolutely. Very important objectives. Like in, in, you know, certainly as any individual's responsibility, it's, it's probably the people whose lives you touch most directly who like that, you, that you'd be working on. Right. Um, and that, that probably is where like the umbrella of your responsibility is, is relative to wh- like whatever, wherever you're at, you know, in, in, in some type of greater society. So like for a, a senator, it could be potentially greater because they're thinking about like all their constituents. Right. You know, so like like they they are needing to think about like the collective good, hopefully, of of everybody underneath their umbrella versus right. versus like, you know, you and I, who it's like our, our umbrella is is maybe smaller. Right. Well, but like so to your point though, then it's like it's in like what what I'm saying is like because I think I think like that, or because I know I think like that, that like I I know I wake up and care about the people I'm responsible for. Okay. I assume everyone feels that way. Yes. Right. And because I feel that way, that that is what makes me feel like humanity as a whole is a good thing. Yeah. Okay. Right. So okay. I'm not using my feeling of how everyone else is to inform myself. I'm using how I feel to inform how I feel about everyone else. Okay. Okay. So I think it, it's, you're doing the same thing, but basically in reverse. Right. But I think it probably means you have a greater sense of self than I do. Sure. Which is, which would not wholly surprise me. Yeah. I think, I think it's something that and not that says more about me than it says anything about you. I think it's something I just struggle with as an individual. Sure. So, okay. That, that, that would be the question that is like, is, is there relatability to this or is it just me? Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> in, in my mind, you know, I you, suspect that there's relatability on both sides of it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Prob- probably so. Yeah. So, so wh- where, where do you land then is, right. is, is more like, like the, the, like, outward in or the inward out yeah 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 so again any feedback popcorn culture pod at gmail.com yeah there you go otherwise uh thank you guys so much for uh listening to our uh, lovely show today with me your very regular host jazzy J. yeah thanks again for having me it was really cool to be here to yeah, sit absolutely. in the chair and everything mm-hmm. you know i mean yeah you always see it from afar you of never, course you right yeah and you'll be sitting there though. i mean it's pretty cool so yeah anyway yeah super super appreciate it yeah but otherwise until next time Pop, pop. Today's episode was edited by Isabel Chrisley. Vaishan Brandon does our art. Catherine Stein is our production manager. And the show is hosted by me and Jonathan Carlin.